Today, we're making vintage-inspired Halloween decor. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Project number one is a black cat sign. We are gonna be using Dollar Tree items. We're gonna start off with this little sign that I found. These are thrifted. But you can see the prices. Maybe you can see where it comes from. There are two of these and I'm going to use one on each project. I'm just gonna start off with some black chalkboard paint and put that down and then go over all of that writing. I tried to erase that off of there and it won't come off, so it must have been permanent. Easy to fix. All right, so we're gonna take this sign apart because we're gonna use this one sign for two different projects. Just pull the ribbon off the back. If you pull carefully, it'll loosen up those staples. You can take those right out and throw them into the trash. Save your ribbon, we'll use it again. And then you can save your little pumpkin. We're gonna use this yard pick. And it is a black cat with a witch hat, love it. And I'm just, just gonna turn it over and then press down and pull the stake off. You can save the stake because you can use it on other projects and we will be doing that in another video. This is a thrifted headband that I found. Looks like a little girl's headband and it very easily will pull right off the backing. And I love these. This, um, this little florette shape or whatever you want to call it, pinwheel, is perfect for vintage DIYs. And I like the colors. Cute. All right, so for the first project, we're going to use the oval sign. And I'm gonna just see how I want this to look. I've moved these around a little bit. I'm sparing you because the video can be quite long if I show you all of it. But you can kind of play around with it and see how you would like for your layout to be. Since the center of the sign is depressed, um, I'm going to use these little tower blocks, tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I use them on a lot of projects for the same thing, just as like little risers or spacers. I'm gonna put it on the back and use it to hold it up off of the sign. I love using signs that have some depth in them because it gives a lot of shadows, it gives a lot of dimension, it gives interest, and it also allows you the space to add in lights if you choose to do that or add picks or anything else that you wanna use. So before I glue them down to the backing, I just wanna go ahead and get their little, these little pieces on here. Their supports, if you will, so that I can place them down. And I do like the way that this looks, and this is gonna fit nicely. So in order to mark my space where I don't forget where I'm gluing, where I need to put the glue, I'm just gonna use some more of these box, and I'm gonna go right in between with my glue. Now, if you have a flat oval uh, sign, which you can get similar to that, you know, at Dollar Tree, if you have something flat, you don't have to worry about using the Jenga blocks to raise anything up, unless you just want to, and that would give you some dimension there as well. Then you can add everything in how you like it. I just kind of making sure that the top and bottom sign have about the same amount of space, but you could use your blocks there too as little spacers. And then the same thing with the cat. I don't want a bunch of extra glue all over the place because sometimes when you peel the glue off of a painted surface, it'll take your paint off. So I don't want that to happen. And so doing it this way is gonna help me a little kind of gauge where I need the glue and where I most definitely do not need the glue. Now this little cat is gonna overlap slightly onto the spooky sign, which I do not mind. I like it. We're gonna go with it. It's all layered and pretty. And then on the top where the hole is, I'm just gonna add one of these little pinwheels or rosettes, whatever you wanna call them, right to the top. It has a little rhinestone in the middle. So over here on this spider, I'm going to use a white paint pen and cover up all of the legs. You could cover your entire spider if you wanted to. And I'm gonna put down a spider ring that came from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna cut the ring part off. You can see it over there to the right. And it will be perfectly ready. I love it! Isn't that so much better? Again, that's gonna give it some more interest, some more dimension, and the sparkle from the little orange stone 
it's kind of carried over from the sparkle and the rhinestone yes you could stop right here if you would like but I'm gonna add a little extra something to my sign so I'm gonna show you how you can add some extra I'm just using some scrap ribbons that I have some are wired some are not and I am going to make a little bow to go on the top and so I've decided that yes, this is gonna be the right length. That's kind of what I was doing, trying to decide about the lengths. You can dovetail your ends on your ribbons. And then the thinner ribbons, I usually just cut at a slant. And you'll see that here. I'm just going at a slant to put those down. I'm gonna add this piece, which I just cut in half because it was a little bit bigger than the other ones. And dovetail that. Use any colors that you like. They can match or clash or complement or whatever you like. Just do what you like. Remember the floppy bows need to go on top or the floppy pieces need to go on top so that there's some structure from below, which are the pieces that have the wire. That makes sense, kind of holds it up. And then we're gonna use that same piece of black ribbon we already had that we took off of our sign and we're just going to tie these right in the middle. A couple of knots right in the center, and you can take your time with this. You don't have to get in a hurry. When they flip over, don't worry, you can push them right back down like I do. A Couple of double knots, triple knot, whatever you're comfortable with, and then you can cut it a little long so that that black piece will be now part of your bow. I love these types of bows in fall and Halloween decor I just think that they're really pretty and they're festive okay so you could put this on the side of the cat or you could put it in the center and just kind of tuck it around your sign pieces and that's what I decided to do you can use a clamp to hold it in place while you move on to another part of your project you know you want to be efficient with your crafting so you can get it all done we all don't have a lot of time to craft all day do we this is my job and that's why I can sit here and do it but for those of you who have jobs outside of your home or you have children or you're taking care of your elderly parents or you have you know disabilities of any type you need to kind of get it done a little bit quicker a little more efficiently so you can see here what i've done i'm just trying to kind of make this almost look like a little feather or embellishment on the side we're just using like the tails we're not actually putting a bow here i've just made a v in the center and then overlapped it and glued it down to itself you can see on this little orange ribbon and I'm gonna put it down just like this I love the little pizzazz it gives and then I thought hey let's just go ahead and use a little scrap and cut this in like a V so I have a V in this little piece and I'm gonna put it right on top and that looks really cute I like that it's a very it's a different kind of layered look but it's cute then you can fluff around you can tuck your bow ends under you can curl them over you can wrap you know kind of bend them around your fingers so they have a little bit of a curl in it and at this point it's a good time to trim up anything that you see that you would like to be trimmed my little ribbon was fraying just a little bit so i just went ahead trimmed it up make it look nice and neat and then those um, other pieces you can trim those down it's best to start off with the same length and then you can just change it up you can trim it but you can't add it back can you very nice that's our first project the next project is going to be a witch sign so we're going to take this other one and paint it of course and then we're going to take a variety of ribbons and some rickrack. One of these is a sticker, but I'm gonna use it as a ribbon. I'm going to measure around the outside of that little border. Cut it so it's easier to work with. And then I'm going to prop it up. I have it leaning on a ribbon spool and the candles in front of it are kind of holding it in place where it doesn't scoot around. This gets it up where I can see it a little bit better and where you can see it a little better. It's closer to the camera. So I'm just going to add a little dot of glue, of glue, and you might want to use your cool temperature here because you're going to be touching this a lot, or protect your fingers, whichever way you want to do it. And I'm going to add just little dots of glue here and there, or little very thin lines. I was having some issues with my other glue gun, and then I ran out of glue sticks. So 
I'm using a bigger gun right now. And I'm trying to get used to the flow. Then you're just going to tap it down. It doesn't take a lot to hold this little rickrack on there, but doesn't it make a pretty little detail? And then we're going to go around the corners. Once you get it all the way around, just kind of go around the corner. That's uh, another lovely part of having a trim like that. It just easily folds over. Clean up your glue if you get any on there. And then continue all the way back over until you get to that corner. You can see I'm trying to be very light with that glue. But if any of it does come off, you can just pick it off once it's cool. Trim your corner down, get it nice and neat. Then I decided to take the black and go over the edges of the sign. Right where it's kind of looking, um, where the gray and orange kind of blend together, I decided to overlap it there. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna go kind of over and off the edge. Makes it look a little bit bigger than it actually is. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. Very easy, just a little bit of glue, just like the one, the orange one that we did. And then we can trim off where we need to trim off. And it's so much easier to do if you just turn it over on the back and just follow the curves that are there. It makes it so much easier. And then we're gonna do the sides last. It will overlap and make it look finished. You can use an orange paint pen or marker or whatever you want. If you have any little areas that aren't covered, you can just go ahead and cover up that gray with your orange. On the top too, I'm just trying to fill in those little spots to make it kind of blend together a little bit better. Then we're gonna go back to those same little tower blocks and I'm going to use six of these. It doesn't take this much to hold it up, but we're gonna use this for supports for lights. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm gonna go down, leave a little space, and now it is higher than the surrounding place and it gives us a nice little area for lights. With that said, you're gonna take a crafting knife and you need to drill a little hole. Or you can use a screw or you can use whatever you drill holes with. You can use a drill. But in case you don't have a drill, you can use a knife. Feed your lights up through here. These, I am pretty sure I got these from Dollar Tree. Pull it all the way through. Then you can take some mounting tape and mine did come from Dollar Tree. This is very good sticky stuff. Put it on the battery pack and then you can just stick it down. It can be upside down, it can be the right, right side up, whichever way you wanna do it. Then we're going to go ahead and glue this down on top of the other sign. You don't wanna glue down your lights there, so just make sure you're not sitting it down on the lights. That's what I'm doing, making sure that it's between my little supports here. And then you're just going to run those lights. Once the glue is dry, you're gonna run the lights around the outside. You don't have to do this tightly, but just tight enough that it, you know, the light strand is kind of hidden behind your sign there. And you can use some of that, some more of that mounting tape. I was down to the last little bit. I had a little tiny piece left to stick on the end of those lights and then just stick those down to the surface underneath or to the top of the sign. I'm really not sure where it's stuck down, but it stayed there. And then when you turn it on, it's gonna look like this. It is not a super bright sign. It is not intended to be, but this is what it looks like when the lights are slightly dimmed. And if you like your sign like this, you can leave it just like this. What you could embellish it with that little pumpkin. You could spray paint it, you can paint it, you can decoupage it, you can put it anywhere you want to on your sign if you would like can see any way that you want to do it or you can do something a little extra special this is a bonus look at this little skeleton it came from Dollar Tree these are a collection of cupcake cups that I've had forever in my pantry a little bit of lace trim a variety of ribbons lots of hot glue we're gonna make some clothes so check this out you can run your fingers around the edge of your cupcake paper. Just get three ones that you like that coordinate. And then fold it over. 
and then you're going to cut just a little notch out just a little one now because it just needs to be big enough to slide over this little witch it's going to go just like we're getting her dressed in the morning she has no zippers so we're going to make sure that it will go above that pelvis and go right up there all right so now we know that's how we want the skirt to be i'm going to go around and do the same thing with the beautiful candy corn flatten it all out fold it over cut just a little notch out right there so there's another layer of her skirt and then we're going to take the orange and we're going to do the same thing you don't have to completely press out the little um, ridges there you don't have to completely press those out because that'll give some interest in the skirt then you're going to trim just a little off because we want each of these layers to be kind of stacked so we have we'll have the black on the bottom okay i'm going to show you i'm going to trim this one down too we want to make sure that each layer is a little bit longer than the other one or each layer is a little bit shorter than the other one because when you stack it you want to be able to see each color so the black is the biggest and then the orange and then the candy corn so see there that's how it's going to line up a tiny bit of glue here just to hold our pieces together to make it easier when we put this back on our little skeleton just a few little dots and then press that down together all right now she needs a little hat so we're going to make a hat now i'm going to use the black for this i'm going to press it out fold it again just like we did before but this time we're not going to cut anything and once we get it into that position we're going to fold it over once more and it's going to look almost like a little dunce cap isn't that cute use a little hot glue to glue your edges down just make sure that it's going to fit on her then i'm going to cut one of the scraps and make a little band for the hat so i'm cutting that off i'm going to go right around here with a little bit of hot glue and now her little hat is going to match her skirt and y'all don't worry she won't be topless we're going to give her a top too okay her hat is perfect you could put a little any other type of embellishment on there that you wanted to and we're gonna put her skirt back on you see her arms are very rigid they're they don't bend she doesn't have working elbows so close your eyes if you don't want to see this we're doing an amputation but don't worry we'll give her her arms back she'll get them back I'll tell you when you can look don't look yet don't look oh, okay good all right we're good we're good she's not in any pain she's still smiling okay so we are going to take that skirt now that we can get to it better and just fold it over as wide as you want the skirt to be you can leave it completely in a full sweeping circle there or you can give it a dart in the back and make it just a little bit smaller and that's what I decided to do just gonna put some hot glue right in there I'm not concerned that it doesn't line up in the back because you can trim that off and she's gonna be sitting on the skirt so no worries she needs a petticoat or a slip so let's trim this down just big enough that we can glue a piece right on her pelvis and that is going to give her a nice little cover and a little cute little unexpected detail I had way too much fun making this little this cute little girl all right now I'm gonna add some of that it's like a velvet type of trim I got it at the thrift store but I know that you can get something similar like in a satin at Dollar Tree or I have seen it in my stores anyway there's her cute little hat here's her cute little skirt and then I'm trying to find front and back here we can put her arms back on you just have to hold it for just a minute once you put the hot glue down in any position that you like you could have her waving if you wanted to but I want her to be very prim and proper and just have her hands sitting on her skirt in front of her now we're going to make her a cute little halter top trim off a piece we're going to tuck it up underneath her arms this was easy to do 
This was not hard, although you see me fidgeting here. And then you can just trim it off and glue it in the back so it makes just like a little, you know, little top around her. And then we're going to make a halter by just gluing one end down on the left side. Going to take it around her neck and then glue it on the right side. And then you can just trim it up so they're both even and she looks nice and neat. Okay, now we can take our little hat and put it on. Just takes a little hot glue on the front top part of her head since the hat is leaning backwards. That way it can grip onto the, the, uh, the paper there, the cupcake paper. So cute. Okay, don't look. I'm trimming the dress and then we're gonna be taking her legs off in a minute. Okay, don't look, don't look. I'll tell you when to look. Okay, you know bones don't have nerves anyway, so she didn't feel any of that. Okay, now you can look. So now we're gonna put her back on the sign and decide how we want her to sit here. If she is so precious, I love her. I think I want her to sit right at the top. And I'll put her in the top middle. I'm making sure that I have her positioned correctly and I'm gonna glue her legs down to the skirt. This is going to also glue her sort of into a sitting position. And conveniently, that sign that I use has like a lip on it, so she'll sit nicely right up there. But if you have a flat sign, just use one of those tower blocks, glue it to the top, and sit her right on top of that. And hold her down for a minute to make sure she stays in place, and let's give her her legs back. Now, I'm going to glue these where it looks like she is sitting with her ankles crossed. Again, prim and proper, sweet little girl. After the glue is dry, go on to the next leg, and then when you put it on, put it on at an angle as well so that her ankles are crossed. And you can use a dot of glue um, between the ankles if you want to. Oh, she's so cute. Y'all, she's cute. I love her. I love her so much. Then she needs to hold something. So you can give her a pumpkin or you can give her a little figurine like a little black cat, which is super cute too. But because this is kind of a vintage inspired video, I thought maybe we would do something with a little more pizzazz. So I'm just going to put this little sparkly pom-pom. I'm going to use one of these cupcake picks and just cut it off. And that came from Dollar Tree. And then also a bat, and we're going to make her a little scepter or a wand with the bat. So I'm going to use my acrylic marker here and just cover that in orange. Going to add some hot glue and let her hold on to that. So is she a witch? Is she a trick-or-treater? Is she a clown? Is she just a skeleton? I think she is a trick-or-treating skeleton, and she is precious. Look at her. I love it. I hope y'all love her as much as I do, and I hope you'll try it. It's really not hard. The next project is a pumpkin wreath. I have done many pumpkin wreaths. I did one also for Halloween last year, and we're going to be doing it again this year. So a Dollar Tree wreath, we're going to take some signs, we're going to take florals, whatever type matches the fabric that you get from Dollar Tree. I also have a little thrifted sign. Here's the fabric that I chose because it looks vintage to me. It looks old. And we're going to put it across the pumpkin. Just so you know, every piece of fabric that I've gotten from Dollar Tree fits on every pumpkin that I've gotten. So this must be the standard way that they cut the fabric, which makes it perfect for you because you can use it. So now the pumpkin is upside down. We're going to get some clamps and our finger protectors and, of course, some hot glue. This is the way I like to do it. I like to start in one space, kind of fold it over, and clip it first. You don't want to be going along thinking everything's great and then you run out of fabric and you have too much in one area because then you have to patch and that is just no fun and you can't craft efficiently when that happens. So let's just save ourselves the trouble and just go around here and put the clips on first, right? We like those tips that help us get the job done. So we're just clipping it down. I am not pulling it super tight. I don't want to bend the frame. I just want to make sure that there are no wrinkles or lines going down the front. 
So I'm just going to continue, continue along um, clipping these down and into place. If you don't have these clips from Dollar Tree, you can use um, like the clothesline wooden clips to hold it in place. I think those would probably work fine for you. After everything is clipped into place, you're just going to flip it back over and you are going to use hot glue underneath all of those little sections. You can put your clips back on until the glue is dry and then you're going to trim off all of your excess. Now for the top. This is going to be the little swag that goes on the top. There are a bunch of ways of doing this, but this is how I have discovered is both efficient and affordable so i just use a thicker like the stem from another floral and use it as a bottom piece measure it across the top and you get about 10 inches that will be the perfect size for these uh, pumpkin frames so i've got some dollar tree leaves underneath and these are the little um, burlap ones underneath some thrifted black eucalyptus these fern pieces are from dollar tree the roses are thrifted, but you can get them from Dollar Tree. I mean, don't typically use roses in my decor, but it's the only black flowers I had. So, you know, just kind of um, decide what you like best. Um, dahlias would have been beautiful. That would have been my choice, but I'm trying to use what I have right now. And uh, because I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't need to just constantly buy and then not use your items. So I just try to make sure that I am keeping the center down when I add in my picks so that when I do clip these together, they'll all be in place. I'm going to keep adding as you go along and I try to mimic or do opposite on the other side. So if I have, um, you can see what I'm doing here. I have the um, kind of see-through leaves on the bottom on the right and then on the left and then I have the solid ones on the top right and the bottom left. You get what I'm saying. So a black zip tie around the middle will hold these all together. And I'm just trying to make sure nothing comes apart. And then you can clip off that extra. Flip that little clippy part to the back. And then you can add in whatever else you want to add in that has to be attached with glue. I chose some random greenery that I had laying around. And just put that on the back because you want to widen out the middle just a little bit now that you have the other pieces ready. I'm going to add some green in here because of the green fern that I have. You don't have to add the green. Um, nobody has to, to come for me about the green and the pumpkin stuff. You know, it's okay. I live in the South. We have green. We have green all year. So, um, go ahead and take that stem. We're going to add two pieces of cardboard and some glue in between so that we have a surface to put our little riser space. I'm going to use two little wooden blocks here. I think they came from Dollar Tree, but I'm not certain. Then you're going to glue those to the bottom. This is going to be the support that's going to hold up our swag. So put that right down on there. You can clamp this into place and let it hold. These are also clamps from Dollar Tree, and these came from the laundry section. They will get the job done. Once everything is dried and your glue has set up, you can start adding in more pieces wherever you feel like you need them. I'm gonna put a rose in the center. And then I decided to use this little cutie pie. But I didn't want the little bows, so I tore those off. Keep adding in your little willow pieces. You want some, some I know as crafters we say depth and dimension all the time, but it's true. You want that. You want the things that look different. You want the things that look spooky if you're doing Halloween. You want it to look wild if you like, you know, cottagey or rustic. You want it to have interest, right? So you're going to keep adding these in where you need them. Add glue where you need it and just keep going around. I'm going to take another one of those burlap leaves, fold it over, and then put it right in the top, right on the top of there. It almost gives it like a stem little glue on the inside of it, a little glue on the paper, and it will dry. And I'm going to add some more of these. Love these. Uh, these, I got thrifted, but I think Dollar Tree has these. Am I right? Am I wrong? Have y'all seen those at Dollar Tree? They're really pretty. Just continue along and make it as thick as you like it. I have had people say that they don't like as much as I put in there, and that's okay. That's why my channel is called Making It My Own. You're going to do exactly what you like. Even if you don't like what I like, you know? 
just do your own thing. I encourage you to do that. That's what I want you to do. You don't have to copy what I do. So going right over the, or the framework that's underneath, I've added a good bit of hot glue and then pressed down my cute little ghosts right there. Once it's dry, you can pick it up and move it around and look at it. Add, remove, whatever you feel like you want to do. Love them so much. Just to break up the black, I've decided to add a couple of more pieces of green in there. You can use um, little flowers here if you wanted. You can use whatever you want. You could use some of those little picks with the balls, little fluffy things, whatever you choose. So for a hanger, I'm just using half of a Chanel stem. I'm gonna put it right here, add a little bit of hot glue, and then a piece of scrap ribbon, and that is gonna hold it in place for you. Perfectly. Here are our beautiful projects. This is our cat sign. It's the most spooky time of the year. Love my cat sign. I do have two more picks, a skeleton and a pumpkin, so they're gonna be in some projects coming up soon. Here is our pumpkin Dollar Tree wire delight. Our little wreath, if you will. I appreciate y'all so much for coming by and for watching my videos. The videos for Halloween have been very popular and I am so happy that you're enjoying them. It means a lot to me that you follow me through the slower times of the year and through the festive times of the year. I have so much fun with y'all. I've got more giveaways coming. So be sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. It lets me know to keep doing this kind of stuff. Again, subscribe if you're enjoying it. I promise to keep bringing you budget-friendly DIYs. And share the video if there's anybody that you know who would also like this content. Big welcome to all my new subscribers and I love you to all of you who have been here from the beginning. You mean so much to me. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.